Hello and welcome to Elite Force Reviews Modding Show. I am Vincent Kuman and I'll be your host coming season of this new show, which will be about the engine or the system behind Elite Force and how to modify it, so actual modding tutorials. Um, for this first season this will be focused on Elite Force 1, as it is my own main area of expertise and, well, the most popular Elite Force game at the moment. And for this first episode, I'll be leading you through uh, Elite Force's file structure, and I'll be giving you an introduction to the actual code behind Elite Force, so in other words, programming. Well, enough chit-chat, let's just get on with it. Well, first of all, we'll need some um, tools. So, with this link, which will be next to the video too, you can download the text again. You can also uh, type it in on a uh, EF files and you'll find it too. Oh. Well, if you just extract it somewhere, I'll extract it in D, then you'll be fine. Then you have to open your um, default Star Trek directory, which will be usually in program files under Raven software. I uh, skimmed it down for you, so this is what it will basically look like. If you go to your base EF folder, uh, folder, you'll find the PK3 files. And she already has a link set, but you will open with. Sorry for that interface. And you'll have to find Fax Guy. You just always open it. And then you can browse into uh, the PK3 files. Well, uh, Elite Force main file is Fax0, which will look like this once you open it. I don't it will not make sense you on the first time I think but I'll try to explain step by step what everything's for. Um well, first of all you see the bot files, it's not really important for the bot support of the multiplayer. Then the environ and it will um contain the the backgrounds so the 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 squares around you in some maps. They have the external data, and that will be important for the code later on because it contains some uh, important settings which have been taken out of the code for easier editing. You can all open them with a uh, notes pad or something, or word pad, or whatever you like. Like this NPC file, you can see that every NPC is Characters are written down into this. So if you would like to give Neelix another hat, you just have to change this. And then Neelix would look funny. But beware, do not save anything into this um, pack zero file, or otherwise your Elite Force will become corrupt. So you always need to create a new file. But I'll continue on the, um, on the structure. You see a GFX, that's mostly for the menu or little effects. Like you'll see, it's all textures, it's all pictures. Same goes with the icons, it's the weapon icons, it's all pretty self explanatory. The level shots, so the pictures we see when you start the map. The maps themselves, which I won't go into into mapping, because I just can't do it. And then you have the menu, which are all kinds of pictures for the menu. Then you come to the models, which are properly ordered. This is a bolt of like these are all the models which we will go into in a later episode, not this one. You see the player models. Players is for multiplayer and players two is for the single player. Weapons two is for both. You see the models, the MD3 files with their accompanying textures. And here you have music. And these real scripts, these are the scripts written in Icarus, which I will also go into in a later episode. This is what runs the multiplayer. All these IBE extensions, you can't open them, they, you can change them, they're all compressed files. But those will contain the commands which the single player runs. You have the scripts, those contain um, the shaders, which are a special form of textures, like the things that glow, move, all the special effects are in here. 
They have the sounds also properly ordered. You see the German, the normal voice. It can be either MP3 or WAV files, but they have to be in a special um, format, which we'll also talk about later. It's not just a bit about the um, structure. You can see some sprites, so just some, which can actually fit in here. It's textures ordered by category. So for everything, you'll see the texture, which isn't really necessary right now. Videos, these are the compiled videos you'll see in game. And this is the VM, these are compiled multiplayer code files. And then if you look into this, these are just the expansions which will change some things, add some things, because of the patches and ready to create it. Number three will be for the expansion pack. And like I said, if you want to learn to change anything, like we give Neelix a different hat, so we'll look up the MPC file. You can change anything to this, so we'll copy it here. We will look up Neelix. Let's say give him the hat of Shuvar. We change this, save it. Now we create a new file which will contain the full X data, like where we got it out. And you just copy it and put it in there and save it. Watch check you save it as PK3, not zip or anything. And you just name it um, Z test. The Z is important because it always loads the file which is in the latest order. So if it would be A test, it wouldn't override it. But if it would be Z test, it would overwrite the file impact signal. So, well, now we create the file Z test, which contains our changed MPC file. And if you start the game, you'll actually see that Neelix now has the hand of Tuvok. Well, that's a bit about the basic structure of PK3s. So.